What is happening guys, Kadi Plays here bringing you another Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel video and in today's video I'm going to be talking about the new Forbidden slash Limited list update here for Master Duel that's going to be going live on October 28th but for most if not all tournaments it's going to be going into effect immediately and I'm sure you guys have already seen a million videos about this. I, I personally have watched a bunch of videos about this because I wanted to see some other people's takes on it and then kind of bring my own. Um, not only that is I did a lot of like searching through the comment section of some of these videos and the, uh, the general consensus seems to be very 50-50. Some people are like, okay, yeah, the meta is currently pretty good in Master Duel. So them hitting these cards like this, hitting these decks like this, um, is fine. It just hits the consistency and overall it's not a bad hit. Not bad hits for the game and good buffs. Then the other people are like, well, this is absolutely ridiculous. Like, why did they even do this? Like, this is a completely pointless ban list. And I want to address those concerns. Um, so I'm going to do that as we talk about this. So jumping right on in, the first card we have going from three to two is um, Longyun. So obviously Sword Soul is one of the best decks in the game. On my tier list, I have it at Meta Defining. And I think pretty much everyone has this deck as Meta Defining or Tier 1. I think on Master Duel Meta, it's dropped a little bit with the recent like implementation of like implementation of Fluunderies into the meta and the new cards, but that does not mean Sword Soul's not a top tier deck anymore. Sword Soul is still one of the best decks, top three deck in the game, top two, top three deck in the game. So um, this the hit makes sense from a community like a ladder perspective and from a tournament perspective, in my opinion. Branded opening also going from three to two. This is another just consistency hit for branded strategies. It's the, arguably the best deck in the game, so it makes sense why this would get hit. Then Fluunder is a magnificent map. This also, going from 3 to 2, is just a consistency hit. Um, and this deck is really, really good right now. Uh, with Advent of the Adventure coming into the game, this, this deck just got insanely, ins like much more consistent and like a lot more powerful. Then we have Roxy's getting unlimited from going from two to three. This was never for prank kids. Obviously, this was for Ad Emancipator. It doesn't really do anything for prank kids because most prank kid lists only play two of this anyways. Um, would only play two of this anyways, um, like one or two of it. You really don't play that many prank kids, especially in 40 card pranks, but it's still good to see this card taken off the ban list because it might be a buff to Ad Emancipator, and that's cool. Widow Anchor come from two to three. Uh, I've seen a lot of people being really like hyped about this and also really scared of this. I wouldn't be scared of this if I were you. Sky Striker is not a real deck. Um, now I say that, and before watch, we're going to see Sky Striker just start tearing the meta up. But I don't think that's the case. The Widow Anchor being at two was not the reason Sky Striker wasn't good. Sky Striker is not good. Well, as far as like you know, top tier, because um, Kagari's at one. Uh, Kagari being at one just cripples this deck. It makes this deck um, very linear which the deck is very linear in general, but it makes it so your plays that you, your opponent playing against you knows exactly how to counter you every single time, and they're not going to have to worry about the same thing multiple times in a, in a row. So just stop Kagari, and you put yourself in a position to succeed in the long run. Uh, now there are, of course, other ways for Sky Striker to recover uh, and recycle their stuff outside of Kagari, but Kagari is the number one way to do that it's the best most consistent way to do that that lets you get infinite resources essentially um have, like multi-role is another way they recycle sorry i'm going on a rant about sky striker now but like multi-role is obviously another way they recycle but that stuff gets banished so if you are able to play through it and grind through it you are still able to beat sky striker in the current state that it's in in like the tcg where kagari's at three and multi rolls at one you only play one multi roll anyways i think multi rolls at one tcg i could be completely wrong but they you don't play more than one multi roll anyways because you just recycle your stuff with multi roll and with your three kagaris but it's just a lot different here in master duel and it, this deck's just not as good here in master duel because of that um but we do have kaiser coliseum so and that card's toxic we maybe this will do something, but I don't think it's be, gonna be because of Widow Anger. Uh, then Torn Scales, I, I'm honestly kind of sh really shocked to see this because this deck is good. Like Phantomites are really really good right now, and this coming from two to three, it it's definitely a consistency hit, uh, consistency buff for the deck, which is probably not necessarily needed, but I'm here for it. I like it, um, and yeah, I. There's really not much to say about it. I'm surprised they unlimit they brought this back to three, considering how good it's been doing recently. But 
Um, I think it probably should have been at three from the start. But yeah, moving on to Roshi. It's funny, we were talking about this in the comments section of one of my other videos. I think it might have been the tier list video that I recently just released, but uh, this obviously needed to come back to three. It probably never should have gone to two anyways. They should have just banned VFD from the start, and they also probably should have just like, banned like Rongo or something, but no one plays Rongo because Rongo's not good in tournaments. Um, it's because it never comes up is the point. It's so hard to get to is the point. But um, this coming back to three is obviously much needed for Virtual World. It's not going to do anything in my opinion for the deck. The deck is still bad. Um, and I you know, hate to say that as a fan of the archetype. It's just not very consistent. And this doesn't address the problems of that. You know. I guess slightly it can addresses consistency, but it still needs multiple names to really be able to play. And even then, it needs its spells, it needs its traps, it needs a lot of stuff to be able to play. So, uh, obviously, these are the full changes, as you just talked about. Um, I'm going to address really quickly, before I end this video, I'm not going to make it a long video, but I want to address the philosophy that Konami is going about, uh, how they're limiting, how they're hitting stuff here in Master Duel. So, as we have seen from previous ban lists, they are willing to hit problem cards so they willing they were willing to hit halk they were willing to hit imperial order they were willing to hit uh vfd they've been willing and like you know celestial so part of the dpe engine they're willing to hit this stuff but they're doing it in a very um honestly a pretty like thought out way considering um it's not perfect now don't don't get me wrong it's not perfect if i was if if konami cared about my opinion for the ban list this is not what i would have hit some of this stuff is not what I would have hit. But, first of all, they don't care about what I say. You know, I'm just a dude on YouTube. And that's totally cool. But, as a fan of the game and as a competitive player, I would rather them do this, give us this, which these are all fine hits in my opinion and buffs in my opinion, as opposed to not getting us anything. Now, people criticize the long, have been criticizing the long yen hit because it's like, okay, well, what does this do to Sword Soul? Well, let me, let me, tell you what it does to Sword Soul. It makes the deck less consistent. And you're like, okay, well, how? The deck is incredibly consistent as it is. And yes, it is. But the inboard for Sword Soul is usually a Baron to Floor, a Grandmaster, and then either a Protos or a Blackout. Okay? Sword Soul Blackout. What now, what hap needs to happen now is, in order for them to achieve that board, they have to they have to hard draw the Longyun or hard draw the Protos or hard draw the Blackout, which are both one ups. Now I guess you could say, okay, well I'll just play a second Blackout or I'll play a second Protos. Okay, that's fine. If that's what you're gonna do to fix the consistency, well that might be fair, but that that's not really the point necessarily of this because that's not how the lists are currently being played. There might be changes to make the deck just as consistent as before, but also those cards aren't as consistent as Long Yun, right? Because Long Yun is more versatile than both those cards in just a general sense. But what it's going to do, it's going to require that your opponent, the Sword Soul player, to open this combination of cards more consistently, because now, if you don't hard draw the Long Yun, because now it's at two instead of three, which makes it like harder to draw into then you're going to have to search it off of the Grandmaster, and that's going to then come at the expense of searching the Protoss, or come at the expense of searching the Blackout. So the Protoss from the Emergence that gets into Protoss. You, you guys know what I'm talking about. But it's going to just hurt the consistency of the deck, and I think that's a fine thing to do. If I was limiting, if I was in charge of the Master Duel ban list, I would have banned Protoss, because I think Protoss is a problem card. But I'm not in charge of it, and if they're going to give us something, I would rather them give us this... Than nothing at all to deal with Sword Soul because Sword Soul is one of the best decks in the game right now. And even if you like Sword Soul, you you should acknowledge that the deck is the second or best deck in the game, and it is worthy of getting a tap on the wrist. Either a Protoss ban or a limit to consistency is really a tap on the wrist because Protoss is not what like Protoss is what puts the deck over the top. It's not what makes Sword Soul Sword Soul, right? As far as Despia goes. Despia is hard to hit because Despia is so fair in so many ways. There's no cards in this deck that are like, that card's unfair, right? Where in Sword Soul, I'm like, okay, Protoss is an unfair card. That's a card that is like super one-sided. In Despia, you don't really have that. Like, what card in Despia is like, okay, that card is oppressive and unfair? Well, you might say Branded Fusion, but Branded Fusion, it it's very susceptible to a lot, right? 
Um, and it's, it is a very, very strong card. And I, you could make the argument to br hit branded fusion as opposed to something like this. Um, but overall, I think Despi is a really fair deck, you know, all things considered. And it's hard to hit a deck like that. Uh, just like it is hard to hit a deck like this. So what they decided to do was they went for consistency. And that's what they did with the branded opening hit. I think this is a fine hit to the deck. Uh, it's not going to make the deck unplayable. Just like long end getting limited to two is not going to make the deck unplayable. Um, this is going to hurt the grind game of Despia because now they don't have three branded openings to protect their stuff in the graveyard. It doesn't have. You're not going to be able to open this as much. You're not going to be play, gonna be able to play around Effect Veiler as much, around Droll as much, so on and so forth. And overall, I think this is just a fine hit. And if they're going to slap the wrist on one card in the deck. I think hitting opening is fine. Um, yeah, opening branded fusion, something like that would be fine. Uh, and then map. I think this is a fine hit. Uh, again, people are like, well, this doesn't do anything. Okay, well, no, it does do something. It changes probability, and probability is a really important part of Yu-Gi-Oh deck building. Um, and I haven't got to that in my deck building series, you know, shameless plug for my other series. Go check it out. I just released part one a few days ago. I'm going to be releasing part two uh, either at the end of this week or next week. But probability is a huge part of deck building and consistency in Yu-Gi-Oh! And if you have one less card in your deck that is going to be a, considered a quote-unquote starter or like whatever it might be, or an engine card, it's going to change your ratios. It's going to change the way that you play, your, you play and build your deck because now it's not as consistent, right? Having two map makes Ghost Ogre a lot better against Floundaries than it did previously because now you only have to deal with two map in the entire duel. Or previously you had to deal with three. Now that's a very simplified way of explaining it. But also, you're just going to see this card less frequently. And that's a good thing if you're playing against Flu Under Ease. So, this, again, like this is like a consistency hit. And that's cool with me as a player, as a competitive player. I'm cool with that. If I was in charge of the ban list, I would have banned Barrier Statue. Or... I'm weird. I, I think Ryza is a really oppressive... I think Ryza is a really cool card. Like, I say cool. A really toxic card. So I would not have been upset about them hitting Ryza either because I think Ryza is kind of like... Ryza is basically... If Ryza resolves, it's an FTK. Right? If Barrier Statue resolves, it's you can play around it. Right? If it's on the board already and it's resolved, you can play around it. If Ryza resolves, you're, you're screwed as a player. Like 9 times out of 10. But, um, so I would have hit one of those personally if I was in charge, but I'm also weird. Like, I, I think Rise is a problem and I don't think anyone else, uh, any, anyone else thinks that. So I, I acknowledge that I'm probably in the wrong there, but that's just my opinion. Um, but if they're going to go for a consistency hit, this is fine with me. And I, I don't, I don't have a problem with this. If anything, I like this hit because it, it makes these decks more quote unquote fair, Right. And then for the Unlimiteds, obviously, I already talked about Roxy's. This is probably not going to be relevant. The Widow Anchor, I think it's great that it got Unlimited, but this does not address the core problems of Sky Striker. Phantom Knights, this is honestly shocking to me because this deck's really good. And then Lao Lao is not going to do too much because Virtual War kind of sucks. Sad. But anyways, that is my thoughts on um, kind of the philosophy that Kam Konami's going on for their hits and also my thoughts on the ban list. I just uploaded a tier list of, like this past week. For the new meta post cosmic ocean and post burning spirit structure deck release but i think i might have to do another tier list uh, at the end of this week or something like that uh, for this new meta so let me know down in the comment section below if you'd like to see that and also what other videos you'd like to see from me in the future so yeah uh thank you guys so much have a wonderful rest of your day uh please leave a like comment subscribe and i will of course see you in the next video peace